Welcome to this short overview of variables in SAP AppGyver. My name is Dean and I created this video as part of my learning to use AppGyver. I'll assume for now that you already have access to AppGyver and are specifically interested to learn a little bit more about the variables. So let's jump right into the application. As we can see in the screen, we have on the top right uh, the, the ability to select a, a variable view. If we do that, we get uh, to see that there are here on the left-hand side, we have five uh, types of uh, variables available. I would say that the two first of them, the app variables and the page variables, is what uh, I would say looks more like normal variables, where the three other ones have some special uh, character to them. Uh, I will only cover the first four types of variables. Uh, the translation variable is not available in my free version, so unfortunately here. Yeah. Let's have a look at uh, these uh, four variables quickly. So first, uh, let's look at what, again, I would say are the more two uh, normal variables, uh, app variable and page variable. They are really very much alike from a lot of uh, points, but uh, where they differ is that, as the name says, uh, the app variables are available for the entire application, so no matter how many uh, pages we have, uh, that particular variable can be read. The variable is initialized, so if we put an initialized value on it, it will be initialized when the app opens, and uh, we will have that available to us until the app is actually closing down. So. Logically enough, the page variables, the same concept is available for the page, is initialized when page is opening, and uh, it is again uh, removed or lost when we are closing the page. When uh, we want to look at uh, defining these, um, we uh, have the same four uh, parameters available for both the app and the page variable. So let's jump to the system and have a quick look at what, what we have here. So if we uh, select uh, the page variable and uh, create a new one, we can see here on the right that uh, we have four parameters available to us. Uh, we can name the variable to whatever we want. There is a type, there's a drop down list, there's a lot of possible types here. Example value, uh, the example value is used so when we work in the development studio and the uh, uh, variable is, is, is displayed, uh, we will see the value that we are typing in here. It has nothing to do with the value when we are actually running the app as such. The initial value is the initial value when we are running the app. So uh, when we are executing the app, whatever we put in here, uh, will be uh, the, the value we, we see. Page parameters is something I've not seen before working with AppGyver. The idea is that one page can pass data to a second page before the user navigates to this second page. Here we see two pages. The left page is a list of quotes. When the user selects one of the quotes, we will open the second page and show details for this quote. To know what quote to show the details for, we pass the quote ID to the second page. We use the page parameter to let the second page know what quote was selected. The page parameter is created on the page reading the parameter. So in this picture, it is created on the detail page. The page parameter is read only for the page it's assigned to. Let's quickly create one in the system. We select the page parameters, we add a parameter. On the right hand side, we see that we have three things we can enter, the name for the parameter, the type. The type is all text, but we have different types of text we can enter, but only text is, is possible. The last one is example values, and here we can add a, an example like we saw with the app and the page variables. Data variables are created as a result of a read from a data source, like the result of a call to an external API, as an example. The basic idea is to get data from an external source and then store the result in a variable. If we take the example here, where I read data from the sales quote in C4C, this will return more than 100 individual data attributes. If we use the approach from before with page or app variables, we will have to create each of these individually. 
AppGyver has this great feature that all of these variables are created automatically based on what the external source in, in AppGyver, we call the data resource, will send back to our application. Using the example here, all 100 plus variables returned when reading the sales code details are automatically created and available to be used in the AppGyver app. I try to illustrate the above here. On the left, we have a data source external to AppGyver. Here it's a C4C. First, a data resource is defined. Here we configure the parameters needed to use the OData service to read the sales code from C4C. Second, a data variable is created by pointing to this data source. I'll quickly sh uh, show creating the data variable here, but we'll leave the end-to-end -end process for a later video focusing specifically on this. We select data variables, and when adding a new, we see a list of the data resources available to use. After selecting a data source, we get a couple of options. The key ones are that it's possible to store the result as a single record, uh, like if we're returning one quote, or if we want to store it as a, a set of records if we are returning a list of quotes. I will end this topic here, but plan to create another video covering data resources and data variables in more detail. To recap quickly, we covered four types of variables in AppGyver. App variables, page variables, both similar characteristics, one available for the entire app and one in available for the page. Page parameters, uh, a simple way to pass data between pages, but only text type is available here. And last, data variables that basically automate the creation of, of often complex data structures received from external sources. Thank you for watching, and please let me know if there are any other topics on AppGyver you would like for me to cover. Have a great day.